capacity is the amount of liquid that the container can hold. Now what you see over there are four containers. Each of them with a, uh, is marked with the capacity of one liter. Now can you quickly count for us how many marks do you see on that container? Eight marks. One, oh, I will say that one, one, one mark is equal to the capacity of one liter. So what is the capacity of the whole bucket? Eight liters. Eight liters of water. Right. So we are now going to take a little race. And I just quickly would like you to work out if you have to fill up those buckets. Uh, uh, the, the, the cans you have to estimate, like to guess. You have to make actually like a, a, a where you have to estimate to see what uh, 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 which liters, which bottles you will use to fill up those. So in this bottle, what do you think? What is the capacity of this bottle? It's a two liter. It's a two liter. And this one? Five liter. Five liter. And here, here we have another small one? 500 milliliters, right. And then we have one here, one liter. a one liter bottle. So you have to take now these bottles and you have to work out which of these bottles you will need to fill up these buckets. So I'll give you a little bit of time to quickly work out and then you take your stuff and when you are ready you tell me. Alright? your different containers we are going to start our race now so when I say I count to three and say go then you start to run okay uh, one container at a time three two one go what mathematics is all about. Pulani, come here. Divide the cooling between you and your three things. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome, viewers. This is program 3 in our mathematics video learning series for grade 6 learners. Today we are talking about the estimation and measurement of capacity. After watching this lesson, you should be able to estimate and measure capacity, convert between the SA units using decimal notation, compare and order capacity measurements 
and round of measures of capacity. This is your opportunity to understand capacity measurements once and for all. So get your own pen and notebook ready, relax and enjoy the program. Ah, there is nothing like a pleasant thing to quench your first After action satisfaction. <laughs> I think that saying comes from the secret ad, but shame on you. Girls, do you know the capacity of a cup? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many milliliters of cooling do you think each cup hold? Mm. Now I understand. We measure volume in milliliters and liters, right? And those are the SI units for volume. SI units? What are you two talking about? Jane is talking about the International System of Writing Units of Capacity. In short, the SI units. We call the quantity of liquid a container can hold its capacity. The units of capacity are milliliters, liters and kiloliters. Wow, imagine that. So my question again ladies, what's the capacity of a cup? How many milliliters of cooling did fill up one cup? Ma'am, I know there goes 250 milliliters into a cup. I know it from Yalbi, my mother, by cakes. See, she always asked me to pour milk into a cup. She thought me that if for the substance 250 milliliters, we use, a, we, we use a cup. Because a cup holds about 250 milliliters. That's correct. And Pulani, how many cups did you use to finish that one liter bottle of Coke? Four cups. Very good, Polani. That means that four times 250 milliliter equals one liter. Okay, there's a thousand milliliter in a liter. Once again, Polani, you are correct. We use bottles and containers to store liquids such as water, paint, oil, and other But for a little bit of liquid, we use a teaspoon. Ma'am, I know, I know. Look, the tea girl again. She bakes using a teaspoon. <laughs> well, I do not think that Susan will have problems in this area of mathematics. And when it comes to exam times, she will be the one laughing. Please, Susan, tell us. Well, a teaspoon holds about five minutes. For example, if a doctor prescribes you a teaspoon full of medicine, it does about five minutes. Thank you, Susan. You help your classmates here to see that mathematics is everywhere in real life and not only in textbooks. Look at these two bottles. They each hold 500 milliliters. And when the content of these two bottles are put together, they can fill up a one liter bottle like this. So one liter is equal to four 250 milliliters glasses and also to two 500 milliliter bottles. That is correct. And the liquid in two cups can fill a 500 milliliter bottle. And that's equal to half a liter. Girls, let's go home. It's hot here in the sun. Girls, before you go and get dressed, let's continue the conversation. Let's talk about kiloliters. Yes, what will hold so much liquid? Jay, you would be surprised. An average family car holds about 50 liters, and 20 cars will hold approximately one kiloliter of petrol. How much fuel do you think these big trucks hold that transport petrol and diesel? Ah, okay, I see. We measure such large quantities of capacities, like the amount of fuel in the large fuel transport trucks in kiloliters. Is that right? That's exactly right. One kiloliter is equal to a thousand liters. Can you think of more examples of fluids measured in kiloliters? Um, maybe the amount of water in a big dam. Yes, that's right. Remember, when we convert between units, either in exam or in real life, it's very important to make sure about the volumes. There's a big difference between milliliters and kiloliters. Viewers, Let's convert between the different units of capacity. We have seen that one milliliter is one thousand part of a liter and one liter equals a thousand milliliters. One liter equals a thousand part of a kiloliter and one kiloliter equals a thousand liters. When we convert from a larger unit of capacity 
to a smaller unit of capacity, we must multiply by a thousand. For example, when we convert liters to milliliters and kiloliters to liters. Milli means a thousand. Remember how we say, the millipede has a thousand feet, even though this is not strictly true. This is useful to remember when we convert units. Let's apply this to a mathematical problem. We have to convert 7 liters to milliliters. 1 liter is a thousand milliliters, right? So 7 times a thousand is 7,000 milliliters. Let's do another one. We have to convert 8.235 liters to milliliters. Well, this is not difficult. We just shift the digits three places to the left and our answer is 8,235 milliliters. Now remember that as we multiply to convert from a larger unit to a smaller unit, we should now do the opposite when we convert from a smaller to a larger unit. Let's look at the rule when we convert from a smaller unit of capacity to a larger unit of capacity. We divide by a thousand. Let's convert 2,000 milliliters to liters. 2,000 divided by 1,000 gives us, that's right, 2 liters. How about another one? 4,567 liters convert to kiloliters. Okay, we know that the rule says divide by 1,000 to get a larger unit, right? So we simply move the digits three places to the right and we get our answer, 4.567 kiloliters. Bye girls. That was quite an interesting day today. So if I understand this conversion thing correct, then a 2 liter Coke Panda or whatever. Juice? Yes, it's the same as 2,000 milliliters. Okay, but if a 2 liter is equal to 2,000 milliliters, how much is a half liter equal to? That one's No guys, that's not so bad. If 2 liters is equal to 2,000 milliliters, then 1 liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters. That means a half liter is equal to 5 liters. Now where does that come from? Oh, I see. We should remember that the big 1 liter bottle that we had can hold 4 cups or 2 500 milliliter bottles. Okay. Yes, then a quarter of a liter tin equals to 250 milliliters. Oh, you guys, I need my needle breakfast and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Viewers, we will now round off capacities. Just as we did rounding off in whole numbers, we can now round off capacities. Let's quickly revise the rules for rounding off whole numbers to the nearest thousand. When we round off numbers to the nearest thousand, we look at the value of the hundreds. If that value is 500 or more, we round up. If the value is less than 500, we round down. For example, if we round off 600 to the nearest 1000, 600 is more than 500, so we will round up to 1000. Now, on the screen, you can see four jugs of water. Let's round off the capacity in each. In jug 1, 545 milliliters to the nearest 10 milliliter. In jug 2, 339 milliliters to the nearest 10 milliliter. In jug 3, 950 milliliters to the nearest 1000 milliliter. And in jug 4, 240 milliliters to the nearest 100 milliliter. Well done, learners! It is good that you still remember what you've learned in the first trimester. 
We are now going to look at how to round off when we have different units of capacity. Don't worry, the same rules as before apply. Let's round off 7 litres, 356 millilitres to the nearest litre. When we round off the nearest litre, the millilitres must be 500 or more than 500 for us to round up. If the millilitres are less than 500, the litres will stay the same. It will not increase. This is the case here. 356 millilitres is less than 500. So we round down and the answer will remain 7 litres. Let's do another one. We have to round off 12.879 kilolitres to the nearest kilolitre. We now look at the digit behind the decimal sign. If that digit is 5 or more than 5, in other words, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9, we round up. Let's see. The digit behind the decimal sign is 8. So we round up and our answer is 13 kiloliters. And a last one. 12.178 kiloliters round off to the nearest kiloliter. We now know that if the digit behind the decimal sign is 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4, we round down. So the digit behind the decimal sign is 1 in this case, which means we round down and our answer is 12 kiloliters. Oh, Mary, I'm so impressed. You children learn a lot in school these days. Um, things that we never learn by, by, by this grade, if I can recall correctly. But Mary, to answer your question, yes, we can use rounding off when we want to add larger numbers. In some situations, like when, you, when we are doing calculations in our heads, we do not need to use the exact values. We can round off to any any number depending on the level of accuracy we need. Let me show you. Let me show you. 545 milliliters plus 950 milliliters plus 240 milliliters plus 339 milliliters. We can round off the numbers to the nearest 10 and then add. So we'll say 550 milliliters plus 950 milliliters plus 240 milliliters plus 340 milliliters. And we get oh, 2018 milliliters. That's right. Or to the nearest 100 and add. And then it will be. 500 milliliters plus 1000 milliliters plus 200 milliliters plus 300 milliliters. What do we get, Mary? I think it's 2000 milliliters there. Okay, now we can round off to the nearest 10 and 100 and then add. This gives us 550 milliliters plus 1000 milliliters plus 200 milliliters plus. 340 milliliters and the answer is looks like 2040 milliliters. Viewers, we have come to the end of lesson 3. It's time to summarize what we have done. We call the amount of liquid a container can hold its capacity. There are different units of capacity. Milliliters, liters and kiloliters. We can also convert between different units of capacity. One liter is a thousand milliliters. One kiloliter is equal to a thousand liters. One milliliter is equal to 0 0.001 liters. One liter is equal to 0 0.001 kiloliters. There are rules that we have to follow when we convert between different units of capacity. For converting from a larger to a smaller unit of capacity, we multiply by a thousand. When converting from a smaller unit to a larger unit, 
we divide by a thousand. We have also looked at comparing and ordering of capacities. Capacities can also be rounded off to the nearest appropriate units. Viewers, we trust that you now know almost everything about capacity. We look forward to having you in program 4 again. Until then, keep well.